Wouldn't it be nice if we were married? No, that's a song by the Beach Boys. Wouldn't it be nice if there were a few little things you could do right now, even if you are still being forced to train at home, that would actually benefit your fitness regime and get you in shape? Well, can you believe it? This bald asshole knows a few things, and I'm going to throw them into your face right now. If you just tuned into this video, or you're like, who is this Johnny Sins lookalike fool? My name is Simon Miller. I just like lifting weights. That's it. I don't have any education in it apart from the education I taught myself and you are free to try this advice and you're free to take this advice and stick it up somebody else's ass. That's what you can do. I don't mind. I like making videos. I like making content. So that's what we're going to do. I like talking about fitness because it's really, really cool. So yeah, look, here's 10 fitness tips, simple fitness tips you can do today to help you in your quest to be jacked and get in shape. Realize I said 10, I meant seven. It's a hot day and I've gone crazy. And number seven is this, count your calories, right? Count your calories. And I don't just mean count your chicken breast and count your rice and count your popcorn and count whatever. I'm talking about count your condiments. I know everyone goes, that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. For example, no sugar ketchup. No sugar ketchup is the greatest invention since the wheel. Like we've got the wheel and we could drive around. Then bread came along and that was awesome. And then no sugar ketchup comes. I say third, I'm going to put it in first. It's better than bread and it's better than the wheel. Because you can have like 15 grams of ketchup and it's like 6.6 .6 calories. However, if you're having six meals a day and you're putting 6.6 .6 calories over each thing and then you add that up throughout the whole week, well, that is a lot of calories. And if you're struggling to lose some weight or if you're struggling to cut out other areas of food, you could just cut out no sugar ketchup for a while and you've made a massive saving. I know it sounds dumb. I know it sounds pedantic. But if you don't know what's going in, you don't know where to chop off and how to make, well, sacrifice is the wrong word, but you know, where do you double down? Like, where do you start going in the other direction? And it's a great thing to do. I always see people, and you should use condiments, of course, make your food taste nice. It doesn't have to be bland and horrible. But they're just squirting loads of ketchup on it and and they say, oh, I'm only eating 2,500 calories. I'm like, yes, but you've also just missed an extra 36. And 36 calories a day is nothing, but it does add up. And you never know. That just may be the teeny thing that tips you over the edge. You don't know. So count that. Count salad. Do you know what I mean? Seriously, just count if you're having some salad. It takes two seconds. You throw it in a bowl. You push it on on your scales. And you figure out how much 100 grams of spinach or celery or whatever the hell you're eating uh, it does. Like... It's, don't do it if it's, it's, you don't have to do it, right? These are like supposed to be little like tips to help you out should you need it. And you don't want to drive yourself crazy. Fitness is meant to be fun. Fitness is meant to be positive. But it's something. And it's something I see all the time. So it's, uh, have the ketchup, have all this cool stuff, but just make sure you know, and then know where to chop it away. Number six is a similar kind of thing. We're looking at small elements here. Just increase your cardio by five minutes every day. Five minutes. That's all I'm asking you to do. No one's scared of five minutes. Sometimes you go sit on the toilet for five minutes and you're on your phone looking up, I don't know, best whey protein because it's fun to buy supplements sometimes. But of course, if you do it five minutes a day and you do that over seven days, well, you've just added 35 minutes a week to your total cardio amount. And it's also something that you're probably likely going to do. Even if you just start off by doing a five minute walk, instead of an extra five minute walk than you were doing before. And your body, as we always say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, boring, boring, boring. But it's true. And over the next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 weeks, maybe you get into a routine and you add it by eight minutes and 10 minutes. It's just an easy way to do it. Because if you're doing no cardio and I say, right, you've got to do two hours right now, you'd be like, Miller, I go away before I stab you in the face. And that would be fair. The judge would let you off too because nobody wants to do 120 minutes of cardio. But if I say do five, let's just do go for a five minute run. You'd be like, yeah, I can go for a five minute run. And what usually happens is you do five and you think, well, I do 10. Then you do 10, you do 15 because once you're into it, you're into it. Don't overthink is my point. There are so many diets and fitness plans out there that are just so excruciating. You have to go from zero to 100 and no one buys into that. In fact, people straight up hate it. Number five is foam roll. Treat your muscles like you would treat your brain, for example. We all take care of our brains and you know everything else. So you broke your bone, you put it in a cast. If you're going to put your muscles under strain, right now you can't get out and do fitness massages or sports, whatever they're called. Um, and that's expensive anyway. That's not something I couldn't do that every week. It would absolutely ruin me. But... You know, just foam roll. If you can get a foam roller for like 10 quid and you, it literally just loosens your muscles. It keeps them, well, it keeps the stress away. And obviously a more stressful muscle is going to lead to more injuries. And if you're injured, you can't get in shape. There's nothing worse than being injured. It takes you out the game entirely. So just dedicate again, another five, 10 minutes, not a lot of time to doing that at the end of a workout. And I trust you will feel the benefit. And your muscles are going to be more supple. You'll probably lift better. You'll probably be stronger. And then you're on that pathway to Gainesville. Hate that word. Number four, change up the rests between your sets. 
Now, I am an advocate for shaking things up as and when you feel it's appropriate. But in terms of your base, if, you're, if, you're tra if your training program is to build muscle, on the sets when you're going super duper hard, like your working sets, two minutes max. Genuinely, two minutes max. 90 seconds is good. Obviously, you want to make sure you're in a position where you can do the best possible set. Uh, so you don't want to go too early, but you also don't want to go too late. I think two minutes is optimum. Some people like to do 45 seconds to a minute, but I think if you're entering that range when you're doing, like I say, your hard, intense working sets, that's more of a cardiovascular exercise. So of course, cool, figure out what your goals are and what your focus is going to be and adjust to suit. But if we're talking about getting muscles and growing muscles, I would say, let's say you do three really intense working sets, keep it to two minutes. Even if you want to set a timer, again, I don't think you need to be that pedantic, going back to the calorie conversation I and the weighing conversation. I don't think you need to do that, but if it helps you, do it. And also try and make sure that when you are lifting, go for like 40 seconds worth of lifting per set. And I trust me, on, those, on that 35 to 40 second period, if you're lifting with good form, talk about it in a sec, I don't want to give it too much away. I'm giving away all my three, two, ones, but it will work. And even if you're having to lift light weights at the moment because you can't get the heaviness because of what you're forced to do at home, you get better workout. I bet you do. All right, number three ties into that. Squeeze your damn muscles. It's the simplest thing in the world. Even when you see someone doing a push-up, they go bam, 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 which is cool. Again, you do you. But if all of a sudden you change up, so when you do a, a push-up at the top, you properly squeeze your chest in. And even if you've got tens, right? All you've got is 10 kilograms. If you're doing dumbbell press at the top, you really give it a squeeze. And I'm talking a two seconds, squeeze it like you're trying to get the muscle to come out the skin. It's a far, far better way to try and well, just evolve and progress and move forward and get bigger and get ripped and get lean and do all these things that we want to do. And yet nobody does it. You will see things that just people just smashing out reps and do that if you want to do that. But again, these are things that you may be looking for to get over a hurdle, right? You want to start making progress again. Like I say, squeeze your muscles, really squeeze it. And it just works. Of course it does work because in that sort of movement is when your muscles is almost stretched out squeeze away. Number two is don't vary the speed of your reps. I, I think it's, again, this is the time under tension thing. I think it's really, really important to try and do a second on the positive and two seconds on the negative. So again, we'll use chest press as we started there. So when you're coming up, you kind of do a one, squeeze, two seconds, and then two seconds down. Like that is, that's how you enter hypertrophy. How do you say that stupid word? Everyone pronounces it differently. And that's what we're aiming for here. If you're aiming for strength, that's different. Maybe you'll be doing partial reps and who knows what else, one rep maxes. But if the idea is to try and build muscle, you want to put your muscle under tension so it knows how to grow. And the best way to do that is to take things slow. And that's doubly important, again, when we go back to the fact you may not have the rep range or the weight range that you would necessarily want right now. And it takes nothing. All it takes is dedication and a choice on your end. And your whole workout is just flipped around. It's something I started doing... 18 months ago, maybe two years. It's not like I didn't know to do it. I just wasn't being aware of it. And as soon as I was like, man, why aren't you doing that anymore? My workouts were better. My progress was better. Everything was better. And I got stronger too. So you should do it. And number one, again, screw weight right now and focus on your form. Two and one are kind of, you know, they kind of go together. But, you know, if you know you're not coming far enough down, you're not coming far enough up or... I don't know, maybe you're doing, I can't even think what you could do in your house, but whatever you're doing, pull-ups, right? Say you're doing 15 reps of pull-ups, but you know each one is kind of like, you know, this, the bar's here, so you know, you know just putting it up. Just say, look, I'm going to do less for now. I know this kind of goes against what I just said in terms of time under tension, but grab it. You don't have to do 15 reps, although 15 reps is a good thing to aim for on pull-ups. But if you pull yourself up and properly squeeze and then take yourself down slowly, if you're only doing four when you perform it that way, well, I bet if you do that a couple of times a week by you know four or five weeks' time, you'll probably be doing six. And after that, you'll be doing eight and ten. And then you'll get back to the higher rep range and your form will be so much better. I always tell the story of my squat. My squat sucked. I was putting all this weight on the bar. And then one day I was like, what are you doing? Your range of motion is like zero. I remember I was down in the gym in Bournemouth and I stripped the bar and I, my whole my whole workout, um, my whole squat workout for that day was just 20 kilograms or 40 kilograms, 20 on each side. And it was damn easy. But then I slowly built it back up again. And now my squat, well, my knees suck, but my squat was so much better ever since then. And I realized how important form was. I think sometimes we're too obsessed with just sort of whacking an extra couple of pounds on the uh, on the bar, which you should do. Progressive overload is massively important, but don't forget the basics, especially right now. 
when again, you're kind of tied into what you can do, I promise you it makes the world a difference. And that's that. There's some tips that you can do today. Right now, you don't need nothing apart from your brain. And if you haven't gone that, you need to go see The Wizard of Oz. I will help you out where I can. Uh, please do like the video. YouTube loves likes. Please hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment below. What else do you want me to talk about? Do you like these videos? Do you not? I'm trying to figure out what to do with this channel. And uh, feedback like that is massively is massively helpful. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. There's a link in the description below, as there is for my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316, because that's how I make my money from doing my videos. I get paid nothing by YouTube. I will see you when I see you.